today we'll start uh, this dynamometer screen is visible to all of you okay so <coughs> basically you can write uh, a dynamometer is essentially a car audio got on a chip on a break with an option an option to measure <coughs> the frictional resistance frictional resistance offered okay <clears throat> once the frictional resistance is known resistance is known the torque transmitted the torque transmitted and so the power of the engine may be obtained okay so <coughs> types of <coughs> basically there are of two types one is your absorption type absorption dynamometer second is transmission dynamometer okay so first absorption dynamometer you can write in case of <coughs> absorption dynamometer the entire amount of power produced produced by the engine is absorbed by the frictional resistance frictional resistance of the break and is transferred and is transferred to heat okay uh, this type of dynamometer this type of Uh, dynamometer may be used may 
may be used for <clears throat> moderate power only okay example first is uh, prony break prony break dynamometer okay, dynamometer then rope break dynamometer uh, third is your hydraulic dynamometer so these three are example of absorption type dynamometer okay uh, second category is transmission dynamometer transmission dynamo meter uh, in this category the energy or you can say power produced by the engine Uh, is transmitted is transmitted to some other some other machines machines where where the power developed is suitably measured measured now uh, example of this category of dynamometer are first is your belt transmission dynamometer Uh, second category is torsion dynamometer torsion dynamometer okay so we will discuss them <coughs> one by one first is your uh, this in case of absorption dynamometer that is your prony brake dynamometer okay so under absorption absorption type first is your prony break dynamo meter so the basic uh, schematic of this type of uh, dynamometer we can take So this is the <coughs> basic schematic which I have taken from the book. Okay, you can draw it. Okay, <coughs> I am giving you some time. So the, uh, here you can see this is the soft rotating. Okay, <coughs> inner diameter. Okay, so again soft. Okay. <coughs> And there are two um, half up blocks, okay, and they are in touch with each other by means of these counterweights, okay. 
and by this screw and nut arrangement against the spring force and and the lever of length l one weight is provided and these are two stops okay one upper stop another is lower stops so when we apply this load they press the rotating shaft and make it to stop and that energy is completely absorbed by this dynamometer that is why it is called absorption type dynamometer so we can write that prony brake dynamometer prony brake dynamometer consists of two wooden blocks wooden blocks clamped together clamped together and a revolving pulley carrying a lever carrying a lever the lever carries a load carries a load w as you can see attached to it attached to it okay so when the brake is to be right when the brake is and to be put in operational operational uh, the long end long end of lever lever is loaded with loaded with suitable weight loaded with suitable weight w okay until until the engine shaft the engine shaft <coughs> runs at a constant speed runs at a constant speed okay so under this condition under this condition the moment the moment due to weight due to weight w must balance must balance the moment of frictional resistance moment of frictional resistance between the <coughs> blocks blocks and pulley okay now let 
W is the weight attached. Weight attached to the liver to the liver in Newton. Uh, L is the horizontal distance. Horizontal distance. of weight W from the center of pulley from the center of pulley and F is the frictional resistance F is the frictional resistance between the blocks and pulley r is the radius of the pulley radius of pulley in meter okay and capital n is the speed of engine shaft engine shaft then a moment of frictional resistance as we have discussed moment of frictional resistance should be balanced by moment due to the load or weight attached both should be same okay so we can say that t is equal to the uh, frictional resistance multiply with uh, the pulley uh, radius which is also equal to the load attached multiply with the level length this should be same and unit will be newton meter okay let's say this is equation one now work done work done per revolution is basically this <coughs> T multiply with angle turn angle turn in radian okay so <coughs> this will be T into what is the total angle turn in radian it is 2 pi so T into 2 pi Newton meter let's say this is equation 2 now if uh, we will find this work done per minute then it will be work done per minute then it will be equal to t into 2 pi into revolution okay let's say this is equation 3 now the brake power brake power of engine will be work done per minute divided by 60 isn't it so this will be equal to 2 pi n t divided by 60 okay. huh. Or we can say uh, T is equal to W into L. So multiply with 2 pi N by 60. It will be in Watt. Because Newton meter per second. That is your Watt. So this is equation 4. So this is all about your Prony break dynamo meter all of you understood clearly 
basically <coughs> this inner part is the engine shaft to the shaft a pulley is attached here you can see here the larger diameter and to the pulley on both side we have wooden blocks okay and those wooden blocks are connected by means of nuts and springs to the uh, one of the wooden block one lever long lever is connected and it is having on one side a counterweight and on the other side we used to provide weight in order to <coughs> ret uh, retard the speed of the engine shaft as long as we need a constant speed we will go on increasing the load on this side okay and we have two stoppers here so this is the basic function so the braking power is denoted by 2 pi nt by 60 this much okay then next is your rope brake dynamometer uh, second is rope brake dynamo meter now the schematic of a rope brake dynamometer let me take it directly from the book so this is actually the schematic of a rope brake dynamometer you can see uh, it consists of a uh, pulley around the shaft to which a rope is wrapped around and in between at equal intervals we have wooden blocks okay then uh, one end of the rope is connected with a spring balance then the other end is connected with a dead weight the diameter of the rope is small d okay <coughs> So we can write that in case of a rope brake dynamometer, in case of a rope brake dynamometer, a rope is wrapped. wrapped around the rim of a pulley of a pulley which is keyed to the engine shaft engine shaft the diameter the diameter uh, of rope of rope depends depends upon the power of the engine power of the engine engine <coughs> okay then spacing of rope on pulley is done by is done by uh, three to four uh, U shaped wooden blocks, U shaped wooden blocks, uh, which also prevent, which also uh, prevent uh, the rope, rope from uh, slipping off slipping off okay 
then the upper end of the rope of the rope is attached is attached uh, to a swing balance to a spring balance and lower end lower end supports a suspended mass suspended mass okay and here the power of the engine the braking power of engine is t into omega okay torque into omega that is equal to the frictional <coughs> resistance multiplied with r into omega okay which is also equal to the load applied minus your spring force denoted by capital s that is the net load acting in downward direction multiply with radius r into 2 pi n by 60 okay so you remember this mg minus s r mg minus s into r 2 pi n by 60 for example uh, let's say a question is given to you suppose <coughs> This question is given. Uh, following data refers to a uh, lab experiment on a rope brake uh, dynamometer. And diameter of the flywheel is 800 mm. Diameter of the rope is given 8 mm. Dead weight on the brake, okay, that is capital M, is 40 kg. Engine speed N is given 150 rpm. Spring balance reading S is 100 newton. Find the engine power so this engine power uh, power is equal to your brake power because we know that in case of absorption type dynamometer all the engine power is absorbed during the braking okay <coughs> so it will be equal to mg minus s into r into 2 pi n by 60 as per the formula so m is 40 into 9.81 that is mg minus uh, spring balance reading is 100 newton so minus 100 into uh, your radius will be how much here you can see uh, diameter of the rope is given 8 mm that means r is how much 0 0.004 meter plus diameter of the flywheel is given 800 that means this capital r is how much 0.4 meter so total radius is 4, 0.4 plus 0.4 Zero zero four. Okay, so here we'll write radius will be zero point four plus point zero zero four because the net torque we are uh, calculating. No, net force is acting in downward direction. So that force is equal to your net uh, downward force is the weight which is acting in downward direction minus the 
opposing force that is the spring force this is the net force acting in downward direction and what is the effective distance this radius this radius is equal to the radius of the flywheel plus the half of the diameter of the rope okay so from here to here it is 0.4 meter plus the rope radius which is 8 mm in diameter that means 0.004 uh, meter in radius so we'll add them got me now multiply with 2 pi into n n is given 150 divided by your 60 so this will be your 18556 watt i think i am clear to all of you bajela okay then uh, next is your um, third one third one is your uh, we'll go to transmission dynamometer okay because as per syllabus in absorption type you have prony brake and rope brake then in transmission you have uh, belt transmission dynamometer so belt transmission dynamometer Okay. and uh, the schematic of this belt transmission dynamometer is it looks somewhere like this we have uh, a driving pulley a driven pulley okay so uh, the tension here is the t1 and so the same tension is being uh, carried out through the idler pulley then this side other side we have slack side so it will be t2 on each side and the distance between them is a from the center of the driving pulley up to the idler pulley uh, center the distance is a and <coughs> this is the frame we have two stops here at the upper, upper side and this one is the, at the lower side and we apply w in this way okay and l is the length of the lever so basically this belt we can write uh, belt transmission uh, dynamometer measure directly measure uh, directly the engine power engine power from the difference from the difference in tension of tight and slack side okay slack side of the belt Uh, the belt transmits the belt transmits power from driver pulley driver pulley to the driven pulley okay. 
through idler gears sorry through through idler pulleys and this type of dynamometer is also known as known as remember as t o t h a m totham dynamometer okay, it is important because in some problem, questions you may ask that a totham dynamometer not as your bell dynamometer so you have to remember the name totham dynamometer Uh, then uh, to maintain to maintain the horizontal uh, position of position of uh, liver of liver a counter weight a counter weight is used okay and two stops two stops on each side on each side are used are used to limit to limit the lateral uh, motion of liver lateral motion of liver lateral motion means this one is the liver no uh, it may move laterally in this way slight variation so in order to stop that we have two stoppers on each side of the liver okay now uh, taking moment uh, taking moment uh, about the fulcrum we have this mg into l uh, minus 2 t1 into a plus 2 t2 into a is equal to 0 okay so from here you can see <coughs> Uh, we are taking moment about this center okay so it will be mg l minus 2 t1 a uh, plus 2 t2 a is equal to 0 because one tension is acting in counterclockwise other tension is acting in clockwise direction for that reason there is a sign variation okay so upon simplification we can write that mg l minus 2a is equal to t1 minus t2 equal to 0 or the tension difference t1 minus t2 will be your uh, mgl by 2a okay so if we get the tension uh, difference we can find out the power so this power p is equal to we know already in case of bell drive it is t1 minus t2 into velocity okay where this v is the belt speed belt speed in meter per second normally you will get short notes on this type of uh, dynamometers along with problem using the empirical relations okay suppose uh, a question will be given to you let's say
Suppose a question is given uh, that in a belt transmission dynamometer, the driving pulley rotates at 300 rpm and the distance between the center of driving pulley and the dead weight is 800 mm. The diameter of each of the driving and intermediate pulley is equal to 360 mm. Find the value of the dead mass required to maintain the lever in a horizontal position when the power transmitted is 3 kilowatt and also find its value when the belt is just begins to slip on the driving pulley taking mu as 0.25 and maximum tension T1 is given 1200 Newton. Okay, so this type of question you may get. So, uh, <coughs> the given data we can see our uh, speed n is given 300 uh, rpm length of lever it is 800 mm or you can say 0 0.8 meter power is given 3 kilowatt that is 3000 watt and now uh, in the first case we know that p is t1 minus t2 into your velocity on uh, or we can say it is also equal to mgl by 2a this t1 minus t2 into velocity is what omega r omega into r okay so we can write this as uh, power is 3000 and m is uh, we need to find out 9.81 l is uh, 0 0.8 and a is 0.36 okay because it is given 360 mm so 2 into 0 0.36 multiply with omega is 2 pi n by 60 so 2 pi n is 300 divided by 60 this is your omega into r now, r is 0 0.18 okay so if you solve this you will get the dead weight value is 48.7 kg okay now in the second case when there is a slip okay so mu is given 0 0.25 mu value is given and angle of contact theta is equal to pi radian and maximum tension is given 1200 Newton and we know that T1 by T2 is equal to e to the power mu theta okay or it is e to the power 0.25 into pi so it is uh, 2.19 okay so uh, we can find this tension in the tight uh, sorry slack side which is equal to t1 by 2.19 so 1200 divided by 2.19 gives you 548 newton okay 548 newton now uh, we have t1 minus t2 difference in the tension is equal to mgl by 2a as per the empirical relation so that we can write here so uh, 1200 minus 548 is equal to m into 9.81 into l is uh, 0 0.8 divided by 2 into 0 0.36 so your m will be 59.8 kg so in both the cases we got the mass okay, dead weight 
now next is your uh, torsion dynamometer torsion dynamo meter okay so basically this <coughs> torsion dynamometer is used used for measuring for measuring large uh, power large power particularly particularly the power transmitted the power transmitted along the propeller along the propeller shaft shaft uh, of a turbine of a turbine or motor vessel motor vessel when the power is transmitted power is transmitted the driving end the driving end of shaft of shaft twist through twist through <coughs> sorry <coughs> twist through a small angle uh, relative to the relative to the driven end of the shaft okay and the amount of twist amount of twist depend upon many factors okay amount of twist depends upon many factors uh, like uh, the torque on shaft denoted by t length of shaft length of shaft let's say uh, small l then uh, diameter of shaft diameter of shaft let's say <coughs> capital d then uh, modulus of rigidity okay modulus of rigidity uh, denoted by in some books capital c or in some cases capital g okay mm, now we know that uh, t by j might have read in mos is equal to c theta by l okay where this theta is the angle of twist angle of twist in radian and j j is the uh, polar moment of inertia polar moment of inertia of sub that is pi d4 by 
32. Then in case of hollow shaft, this will be equal to pi d4 minus d4 by 32 for hollow shaft. Okay, so from the torsion equation, from the torsion equation, we can write that T is equal to C J by this is J, huh? C J by L into theta is equal to K dot theta because this K is equal to C J by L, okay? Where this K is equal to C J by L is a constant for particular shaft and the power transmitted power transmitted P will be same as 2 pi nt by 60 in what okay suppose uh, a question is given uh, that well this question is given and that uh, a torsion uh, dynamometer is fitted to a propeller shaft of a marine engine it is found uh, that the shaft twist uh, 2 degree in length of 20 meter at 120 rpm if the shaft is hollow with 400 mm external and 300 mm internal diameter find the power of engine take modulus of rigidity of the shaft as 80 gpa so <coughs> we'll write the given data first uh, theta is given 2 degree that is 2 into pi by 180 is 0 0.035 radian okay length of the shaft is 20 meter speed n is given 120 rpm uh, outer diameter is how much 400 mm okay that is 0 0.4 meter uh, inner diameter is 0 0.3 meter modulus of uh, rigidity is 80 gpa means 80 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter square okay now for hollow shaft as I told you uh, that polar moment of inertia is pi by 32 d4 minus d4 calculated how much it is coming pi by 32 0 0.4 to the power 4 minus 0 0.3 to the power 4 get us to the club go It is approximately 0 0.0017 meter to the power 4. Okay, then torque applied, torque applied on soft T is equal to C j by l multiply with theta so it is 80 into 10 to the power 9 value of c j value is 0 0.0017 multiply theta is how much 
in radian 0 0.035 radian divided by L is 20 meter. So, the value will be approximately 238 into 10 to the power 3 Newton meter. Now, engine power P is 2 pi nt by 60. So, 2 pi into n is uh, 120 into t we got as 238 into 10 to the power 3 divided by uh, 60. So, it is 2990 uh, kilowatt. Okay. So, this type of questions you will get in case of your torsion dynamometer. So, I think your syllabus is over. Okay.